10 years ago, hospice was not the same um, acceptance in terms of the societal culture as well as the hospital culture. Um, we've come a long way in that time. Our patients have been able to have end-of-life care in the hospital setting for many years prior to the hospice home. But we recognized that that was not a perfect setting for them. And we wanted something that was more like home, where patients could be comfortable and their families could be with them all the time. Several of the members of the board recognized that Spartanburg really needed a hospice house. That's what we called it at first. At first, Oh, they wanted to call it a hospice house and I thought well maybe it should be a home because we're gonna have Thanksgiving dinners and Christmas and weddings all kinds of things that will go on here just like a home and so I said let's just call it the hospice home and it kind of caught on. The hospice home concept was fairly new to South Carolina so we went to myself and many others went to several hospice homes across the nation we went to these other hospice houses to look at two things, what they did well and where they had problems. One of the main goals of the hospice home was, was to disguise a hospital setting as a home. And so first of all, we spent lots of time looking for land. We looked at a lot of different sites, but what we settled on was truly a, a Spartanburg model. The hospice home was carefully designed and it's very clear. I, I see it all the time when I look outside or I walk outside and I um, encounter families enjoying just a break and just some fresh air and just the outside of the property. It just is such a soothing setting, and just naturally. So everything about the hospice home is not a hospital in terms of the look, the feel, and especially the atmosphere for the patients and their families. When you walk in, you very much feel like you're at home. Quite often we'll encounter families just having a chat out in the lobby. And then when you go down the hallway, the way the building is curved, you don't feel like you're in an industrial hallway. It's very soothing and comforting. And then when you go into a patient room, you see how large they are and you can bring your whole family um, to see this patient and to spend those, those precious moments with each other and just be together. I just was real. Uh, interested when they said that there would be a lot of respite care for the families when they come to the hospice home because now they've got someone to care for their loved ones and they're not the caregivers anymore and I just know that sometimes you just have to be a daughter or, or, a, or a wife or a son or a, just a family member again. The playroom offers a place for adults to have hard conversations while still watching the children, or if the children are getting a little rowdy, you can shuffle them off to the playroom and, and let them have a break too. Um, it's important for all the family to be comfortable and be together. Remember, this is the first time that the, the foundation had undertaken something from start to finish. This we were starting from the beginning, and so we didn't really know if this was something that the community was going to accept the struggles were, were tough. Um, in concept, everyone agreed. Uh, we need to do something. It wasn't budgeted. Uh, we had a, a lot of things happening in the state around certificate of need. Um, and the, but our community came together. We, we got three wonderful tri-chairs, Jim Thompson, Katie Hodge, and Marcia Gibbs, and our hospice board, and certainly our board of directors and the administration. And we were able to um, make this the house that Spartanburg built and we raised uh, pretty close to $6 million. You're offering people a chance to participate in something that is so meaningful, bigger than any of us, that's gonna impact all of us, uh, certainly all of our families. It was also such a, a, a wonderful uh, endorsement of human nature. I enjoyed going on the calls to, to folks to explain to them what we were doing, and it was amazing how people just they just caught on. As the hospice home began to be built, tours that members of the hospice board would lead through the construction site with potential donors. I remember very well stepping around construction nails and the construction site to lead donors and have them envision what the home would look like. It was a beautiful thing watching people all over the community, um, all different walks of life, to step up, to give a little, to give a lot, um, for the employees of the hospital to uh, sow 
uh, firmly um, embrace and affirm the, the hospice program. It was great working with, with Katie and Marsha. Um, you, you may already know, Katie's family. Um, she's my, um, my wife's aunt and godmother. And so it was special. Katie decided that she was gonna get behind this and, and did she ever. Katie Hodge wanted everyone in the community to know what the hospice home was all about. She was so pleased and happy to know that this facility would provide not only wonderful care for a patient, but special care for the families. And to be in a building like this with nature all around and art all inside and beautiful soaring ceilings and a warm, cozy fireplace, it just meant so much to her to know she had been part of this incredible effort. Gosh, my favorite part of the hospice home is just really seeing this dream, this seed come alive. And it's, it's, it's not about any individual, it's about our patients and families for generations to come. Losing my mom there, uh, everyone was kind, courteous, they were polite to me. They always made me feel like, you're welcome here. No matter what time of day and night, you're welcome here and we're going to do everything to make your burden lighter and I feel that every step of the way, every step of the way. When I started giving money toward the employee campaign, I had no idea that I would be using the hospice home 10 years later for my family member. It was a great blessing to our family. There was just a, a great synergy of like-minded people that came together at a special time to create a, a, a special um, now fixture in our community. I'm really grateful to everyone that was involved. It's hard to imagine what it would be like for our hospice program to not have the hospice home. Having it for 10 years, it's just now, it's our fixture. It served us well for the last 10 years, and I can't believe it's been 10 years, but uh, it has served us very well in our community. And I love the hospice home because there's, we serve everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. It's, we serve everyone. I just have to say that the folks that work here, this isn't a job for them. This is their mission, and we are so blessed to have them. As a lifelong resident of Spartanburg County, I'm so proud of my community. To have supported the build of the hospice home and to raise the money to do this is amazing. Everybody that comes to the hospice home, I believe, feels that ownership because we do. We, we built this home. Certainly, uh, I want to thank the administration for the health care system, board of directors, and our foundation board. Thank you, Katie, Marsha, and Jim for your drive and your motivation to make this a reality. And I'd like to thank the larger Spartanburg community for the support in building the hospice home and for the support in the 10 years of its operation. It's your home. We're glad it's here and we look forward to the next 10 years. There's one thing that I think is really special about the hospice home is that it gives the children a special place to come uh, to see their loved ones and they don't feel like it's a hospital. They feel like it's more like a home. The hospice home made me not feel afraid. It made my grandpa comfortable. That makes me happy.